My name is Jim Haney, and today we will be looking at how to use Fusion 360 to make realistic renders for presentations or your website. Let's start by looking at a website that uses Fusion 360 renders to convey information. The use of Fusion 360's render workspace allows us to get high quality images of a project or component before it is manufactured. Renders also give us more control over what the final image will look like. For instance, this exploded view would have taken more than 100 hours to set up in real life, but only took 10 minutes in Fusion 360. We are also able to use renders to better match the lighting and background to the surrounding media. These renders seem to float on the web page because their background color matches exactly with the background of the website. This effect can be used to give presentations and sites a more polished and professional feel. Let's jump into Fusion 360 and look at how to make renders like these ourselves. Before moving to the render workspace, let's first determine what our model will look like. Open the Appearance panel by clicking Appearance under the Modify drop-down at the top of the workspace. We can now use the Appearance panel to override how the model will look. By default, the model will have the appearance of its physical material. If no physical material is set, Fusion 360 will use Steel as a placeholder. There are three main parts of the Appearance panel. The first is the Apply selector. You can use it to determine if an appearance is applied to only one face of a component or the entire component. In general, it is best to apply appearances to the entire component rather than just a face. The next section is the palette, labeled In This Design. It shows all the appearances currently in use in the model. Below the palette is the appearance library. It contains thousands of pre-made appearances that you can apply to your model. Let's say we want to make one of the bolts at the top of the engine look like it is made out of red anodized aluminum. We can open the Metals folder in the library, select Aluminum, and then see what options are available. To the left of the name of the appearance is a body showing a preview of what the appearance will look like when it is applied. If the preview is of a donut-shaped object, the material is usually opaque. If the preview is a sphere, the material is translucent or transparent. If the preview is of three plates perpendicular to each other, then it is a special appearance that uses linear patterns to mimic a complex design such as a diamond plate, wood grain, or carbon fiber. Not all appearances in the library come as defaults. Some of them need to be downloaded by hitting the download arrow to the right of their name. This doesn't cost anything, but it will take up storage space on your computer. Let's select the aluminum anodized glossy red and apply it to one of the bolts on the top of the engine. Click and hold on the appearance and drag it to the body. When the body is highlighted, release the appearance and it will be applied. We can now see the appearance added to the palette as well. What if we wanted to edit the appearance of multiple objects at once? There are two ways to quickly do this. The first is to drag a new appearance over an old one in the palette. This will update all the bodies with that appearance. Note that this does not work on linked components. You will have to update their appearances manually or in the original file. The other way to edit multiple appearances is to drag an appearance to the component or body name in the browser at the left of the screen. This will apply the appearance to any body that has a default or no appearance currently applied to it. Let's try making all the parts of the injector painted red and all other aluminum parts painted blue. To do this, let's select the paint enamel glossy red and apply it to the injector components in the browser. Then let's select the paint enamel glossy blue and apply it over the aluminum in the palette. Since most of the components of the injector were made of aluminum, when we added the blue over the aluminum, it recolored them all. If we did this in the opposite order, we would have had an injector that was red and all the other aluminum parts blue. Let's say you want to make the aluminum orange instead of blue, but there is no orange paint. We can create our own appearances from scratch, but the much easier approach is to modify an already existing appearance. Let's right click on the blue paint and hit duplicate, then right click on the second blue paint and hit edit. From here, we can change the RGB value of the material, as well as modify its roughness and reflectiveness. These two sliders are useful if you find the material is acting too much like a mirror later on in the render workspace. Many material defaults in Fusion 360 are very shiny and not realistic so you may have to tweak these later on. Let's change the RGB values of this new paint to 255, 115, 15, which is the RIT orange. We can then rename the color from blue to RIT orange in the bar at the top and hit done. 
We can then drag this new color on top of the components in the workspace or other colors in the palette to apply it. To save a custom appearance for future use, you can right click on the color and hit copy to my appearances. It can now be found under the my appearances tab in the library. The My Appearances library uses the same file structure found in the Fusion 360 default appearances library. If you use the same few appearances very often, you can also consider adding them to your Favorites tab to make it easier to find them in the future. Oftentimes when creating renders, we need to move components around in ways other than we want in the main design file. To help alleviate conflicts with how the model is arranged, Let's create a duplicate of the design for use in renders and animations. To do this, let's create a new design in the same folder as the original, and save it with the name Renders and Animations. We can then right-click on the original file in the data panel and hit Insert into Current Design. When the model appears, hit OK at the bottom of the Insert panel to the right. We can see that the original file name is to the left of the chain, indicating it is linked. This means that any modifications we make to the original model will automatically update here, but if we move around the components in this file, they will not move in the original. This also means any appearances we apply in this version of the file will not affect the appearances we see back in the original. Let's move into the Render workspace now by clicking Design in the top left corner and choosing Render. The first step in making a render is to have a general idea of what you want to show. For our first example, let's say that we want to show how the cooling shell and the end of the nozzle are spaced. Let's rotate the camera to look at this portion of the engine. The render workspace uses the same camera controls as in the design workspace. To get a better render, we can selectively hide certain parts of the model. Let's hide one side of the cooling shell and the hardware that holds it on. You do this the same way you would in the design workspace by clicking the eyeball next to the component in the browser. It also saves processing power to hide any components that are not visible in this shot. Now, let's begin to set up this scene. On the top bar of the render workspace, click the Scene Settings button to bring up the Scene Settings panel. Let's work down the options one by one to see what each one does. The first option is the brightness of the scene. This is what determines how much light is used to illuminate the model. Usually a value of 1000 is more than enough. The position button is used to set the position of the light source around the z-axis. This is useful if the default lighting orientation is putting a bright shine or shadow on a critical section of your part. The third and fourth options control the background. You can use the background dropdown, paired with the environmental library tab at the top of this panel, to place the model in a realistic scene, such as a field. However, most of the time, the solid color background produces the best and easiest to see render. The bar below that allows you to set the background to a specific RGB color, with white usually being the best for most renders. Below that are the ground settings. I personally never use a ground plane with my renders, since it casts long shadows behind the part, and ruins the floating effect that parts get from being on a solid color background. Below that are the camera settings. Unless you know what you are doing when it comes to photography, Leaving these alone is usually the best bet. The only one that we should change is the last option, the aspect ratio. By default, the renders we produce will be the shape of our window that we are currently using in Fusion 360. It is better to have the final render match a standard, such as 16 by 9, for easier manipulation. If you are doing a lot of renders, you can click the Save as Defaults option so you don't have to mess with these settings each time you open the render workspace. Now that we have everything set, let's begin the render. There are two types of renders in Fusion 360, cloud and in canvas. In canvas renders usually give a faster result, allow you more immediate control over the render, and are free to run. Cloud renders can look better than in canvas renders, but take longer to process and cost money depending on what license you have for Fusion 360. To begin an in canvas render, click the in canvas render button at the top of the workspace. This will begin processing the ray tracing to render the image. If you move your camera while in-canvas render is running, it will reset the render and start again from the new camera position, so be careful while it is running. If you want to pause the render, you can click the pause button at the bottom. If you are happy with the render but want it to process further, 
you can drag the slider at the bottom right from excellent to final or to infinite. The longer you let a render run, the better it will look, but after a while there is almost no difference between iterations. The speed at which Fusion completes your render is based on the power of your computer. Slower and older computers will take longer to complete a render. If possible, it is best for you to be doing nothing else on the computer while it is running a render, to free up resources for Fusion 360. When you reach a point where you are happy with the render, click the Capture Image button at the top of the workspace. You can then name the file, choose a file type, and save it to the Fusion 360 cloud or your computer. One of the major weak points of Fusion 360 renders is that they are not good at differentiating between two touching parts. If you look at the render we did in the previous example, we cannot see the separation between the base of the cooling shell and the main body of the cooling shell. One good way to get around this is to make exploded views. Fusion 360 has the ability to automatically generate exploded views, but it does not work well if you have more than a handful of parts. Let's go over how to make an exploded view by hand. The first thing we will need to do is go back into the design workspace by hitting render in the top corner and clicking design. Now, let's see what we want to make an exploded view of. For this example, let's make one of the injector and the seals that it uses. Let's hide everything except what we want to explode in the browser on the left. Now we need to begin positioning parts for the exploded view. We cannot move bodies since this is a link design, but we can move the components that enclose them. Before we start moving, we need to determine our explosion axis. Usually, you want all the parts in an exploded view to travel along one central axis, as if you were pulling up on the assembly and parts were falling out the bottom. This makes it easier to visualize where parts are going to fit together as it recompresses. If your assembly is very complex or has too many parts for a linear explosion to work, it may be better to do renders of each subassembly instead, then explode the subassemblies from the main assembly. For this rocket engine, it is easy to see that the axis in line with the direction of thrust is the easiest axis to explode along, since all the parts are made to assemble that way anyway. Let's start by using the Move tool to move the top component up and out of the way. Then, let's repeat that for all the parts. As we are moving them, we want to consider how we will view the explosion. Usually, viewing the explosion from an angle will give the most information, like the example we looked at in the start of the video. We want to make sure that we can see each part from this angle individually, with as little overlap as possible. At the same time, though, we need to balance that with making the explosion as short as possible. If we have to move parts too far back and away from the camera, they will be hard to see. Once we have the parts arranged how we like, we can go back into the render workspace and do an in-canvas render to see how it looks. If we're happy with the result, we can then save the render and move on to the next example. A lot of rendering comes down to a trial and error process. Don't be afraid to try multiple different orientations of the camera, the lighting, and the parts to get the desired result. Now let's take a look at a larger assembly, and how we can use decals to make it seem more lifelike. This is the CAD for the IREC 2021 sounding rocket named Blackout. I have already gone through and applied appearances to all the exterior faces to make it seem more realistic. However, it still does look like a very bland, monotone rocket for the most part. Let's add some decals to liven it up. To add a decal to a component, in the design workspace, Click the Decal button under the Insert dropdown. You can then choose an image file from the cloud or from your computer. For this example, I have a stock image of the RIT logo. Sometimes you may want to make your own custom decals, and that can really help to liven up a model. But, Fusion 360 has no way to edit decals. You will have to use another image editing software to make these. Later on, you will see some example decals that I made in Inkscape. When adding decals, 
You can use any image, but images with a transparent background usually give the best result. Once you have selected the image, you can select a face to apply it to. Let's apply the logo to one of the fins of the rocket. Once you select a face, you can use the scale, opacity, and position options to orient the decal how you want. If you make the decal too large and it wraps around a surface, such as around the diameter of a tube or over the top and side of a component, don't worry if it looks weird. When you start the render, it usually corrects the graphical issue. Once you are happy with the positioning of the decal, hit OK on the decal panel. You can now continue to prepare for the render and even move the component. The decal will stay affixed. If you want to edit the decal again, you can right click it and hit edit decal. You can also find it in the browser in a folder labeled decals underneath the component name it is applied to. If you want to remove a decal, it must be done from the browser by selecting the name of the decal and hitting the delete button. Let's add a few more decals and go to the render workspace. Here you can see we are back in the render workspace and I have applied a few more decals. The two decals closest to the camera were made custom in Inkscape. This process is a great way to test different paint schemes and label designs for a project before committing to purchasing equipment or making mock-ups. This render will be used for a banner image on a website, so we don't care what the aspect ratio is, as long as it is done on a white background. Again, I've oriented the camera in an angled view to get the best balance of seeing as much of the assembly as possible, as well as providing a lot of detail on the components visible. Let's start the in-canvas render and let it run. This render will take a lot longer than the previous one since it uses a patterned carbon fiber appearance and has 20 times more components. And after about 20 minutes of in canvas rendering, we now have the finished render. Hopefully this video has taught you a bit more about how to use Fusion 360 to create renders, and you can now create even more beautiful presentations and websites.